Okay, today I'm going to introduce you to Pronerface. Um, in order to get Pronerface, just go ahead and type Pronerface into Google, and the first thing that pops up will, will probably be this, this link right here, Clement Print Run, and this is what you're looking for. It's got the Pronerface console for uh, 3D printers. So go ahead and go there, and what you're going to be greeted with, if you're not familiar with GitHub, is all of the files in the program. Okay, over here on the right you'll see a button that says download zip. What you're going to do is go ahead and download that and if you scroll down to the bottom you'll see all of the different instructions for the different platforms. Okay, if you've got a Mac or a Windows machine or a Linux machine there are specific instructions for your Linux distro and dependencies. So this has all of the information that you need. It's got uh, a great, a great amount of information, and basically, you come here, and you'll know how to install it. All right, so I'm just going to introduce you to the program. I've already got it installed on my computer. So, oh, that's another thing. What you're going to want to do is. Um, if it's not executable, you, you're, you're gonna after you get done uh, extracting your file uh, and installing all your dependencies, you'll go into the folder and you'll type chmod plus x pronter base dot pi, and what this is going to do is make your file executable. Another thing that you need to be aware of is that if you haven't added yourself to the dial out group you will not be able to access your printer. You won't have the permissions as a normal user. So the easiest thing to do is simply run Pronerface as a super user. So sudo Pronerface. I'm sorry. Dot forward slash Pronerface. Okay, and when it comes up, you'll be greeted with the Pronerface console, okay? And down here at the bottom, you'll see I've got these two bars uh, I turn these on these are off by default also this is off by default so you won't be able to track your temperature just go ahead and click right here and it will track the progress of your thermocouples alright so let's go to options and take a look at some of the things you might set there really aren't very many things that you're going to want to mess with in this everything else it, it's, it, it really depends on your slicer. Uh, most of the things you're going to do with regards to printing are going to be in your slicer. Here, all we need to do is load a file, possibly do some maintenance, and, uh, and start printing. So some of the things you might set will be your bed temperature for PLA and ABS. You can use any type of material, it really doesn't matter. These are just labels that are available in, that are already available in the, uh, in the, in the console. So, find the, find the temperatures for your material, type your temperatures in, and then you will have them available over here in the drop down menu. Put in your build area, your width, your depth, and your height and this will basically just monitor and throw an error if you put something on there that's too big this is something you should probably catch in your slicer in fact if you don't catch it in your slicer you're probably going to break something your offset this is going to be the offset from where it thinks the tool is honestly you don't need to mess with these um, for a beginner you're not going to want to do anything except uh, in your slicer program default home positions are correct for most machines again this is dependent on your machine and your firmware and we'll go over firmware in another video okay so if you want those little bars that I have down here what you do is go ahead and click I don't know which one it is it must be the gauges click this this box and you'll get these nice uh, bars down here it's a little bit easier to read because it's got digital and analog and uh, instead of just a line and a graph uh, so I like that I, I always turn that on um, 
external commands this tab is going to be slice I like standalone programs um, I don't like to use prawn or face to do this for me every model is unique beautiful and it requires love so I don't like to automate this process I really I really take the time to get my slicer settings set up right um, I didn't go over any of the other settings in here because you know don't really need it uh, if you want to use slicer you can integrate it into this uh, but I don't use slicer uh, so uh, maybe I'll look into that and do a video at some point but for now this is all you need to be worried about uh, you don't need to worry about your baud rate you can select that from the open inter from the interface in the front so basically what you're going to do is come in here and change your temperatures change your width depth and height and you'll be good to go okay so what do you do now okay well you plug in your plug in your printer and if you come over here click port it will automatically pull you up to your printer port it's uh, it's pretty foolproof if it doesn't come up your printer is not connected something's not set up properly um, baud rate is determined by your firmware again uh, but they all run it at this speed so you won't have to change that and most likely uh, down here you'll see uh, user interface uh, one thing I didn't cover from the settings is this speed down here your feed rate this these speeds right here determine your feed rate for these moves uh, this is a way to move your print head around without using g-code uh, so you can manually manually do that uh, Z moves you up and down you know left right up down pretty pretty standard stuff if you're messing with a 3d printer you probably know this stuff um, so yeah go in load a file and uh, it'll tell you the uh, volume of the print in most cases and connect to your printer I don't have my printer uh, plugged into this computer right now but what you would do is connect and print and that's it so if you need to do any sort of manual stuff uh, like if you're changing filament, you know you could turn your hot end on up here. You can extrude a, a, a small amount without having to type G code in, um, and this takes care of loading up your, serving up your your G code to your printer. You can also click SD over here, and you will be able to upload an S, a G code to your SD file SD card over your USB. Uh, USB port but I wouldn't recommend it I would recommend pulling the SD card out the transfer rate is pretty terrible uh, so you you would be wise to pull that card out and just copy it over and then you can simply load the file and print it as normal and uh, unplug your computer and let it print by itself off the SD card so I didn't go over a lot of things uh, you really honestly don't need to know too much about this it's not a big it's not it's not as in-depth as the slicer you basically load your file up maybe do some maintenance and use it to print uh, that's what I use it for anyways um, I hope this was informative and uh, thanks for watching